I'm here in Arlington, Texas. Uh, what an incredible place this mission, uh, Arlington Metroplex, started out as an idea with uh, Miss Tilly, who you're going to hear from in a minute. How can I help my neighbors? How can I help the people who are near me and who are in need? And it has blossomed into this magnificent place. We're standing in the, Chris the Christmas Center right now, uh, where gifts are prepared for families in need. But there is a medical clinic where volunteers who come in from the medical profession, a dental clinic, volunteer dentists and hygienists, uh, s medical students, dental students, nursing students, uh, a whole variety of people. About 2,500 volunteers each week uh, distributing food, distributing clothes, there's counseling. Basically, all the needs of the community. People can actually come in off the street and there are other human beings who are willing to volunteer their own time, their own effort, in many cases their own money to help their fellow human beings. There are few things that are more inspiring than that. And that's why we want to talk about this on the Mustard Seed series. Faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain as it says in the book of Matthew, Mrs. Tilly had faith. But not only did she have faith, but she had works. And so many people have come and joined her in those works. And it's making an amazing difference in the lives of thousands of people. And it's helping to change the city. And now, you're going to hear from Miss Tilly herself. Tilly Bergen, Mission Arlington, Mission Metroplex. Basically, we take church to the people. And our definition of church is what we do seven days a week, almost 24 hours a day. It's a way of life for us. Mission Arlington is not an organization. <clears throat> We're people who love to live and work among the people because it really began with a Bible study in an apartment at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning with people who did not know Christ. And so as we started the Bible study teaching John 3:16 because the most important word in John 3.16 is whosoever. And so it's about whosoever. We never met a life yet that God didn't create. So we can't decide who to throw away. And there's no one you can throw away. But in doing the Bible study, you realize that people were hungry and they couldn't hear you. The kids weren't in school. There were no school supplies. There were no clothes from the wear, <clears throat> no way to get there. And so we began to help them at a point of need in their lives. And so as we taught them and fed them and loved them and had compassion and the community began to come and join us, people who weren't necessarily being used anywhere else, you realize <clears throat> that the book of Acts teaches that's exactly what Jesus did. He taught them, he fed them, he loved them, he had compassion. And so we just simply want to be followers of his that will penetrate a community. And this community has a host of leadership and volunteers who have said, we'll help and we'll come and we'll do. And so 34 years later, we're still doing the same thing. We're consistent with what we say we're going to do because it's taken hope into lives and in Christ there is hope. Well, I'm Mayor Jeff Williams uh, of Arlington, Texas, and we are in Mission Arlington in the Christmas store, a place where people that might not have any Christmas at all come to be able to get Christmas presents for their family. And these are all donated gifts uh, there by people that, that give here. And it's very inspiring to see the, the, the various families that come through to be able to have Christmas that otherwise would not because of the economic challenges that they are experiencing. We have a number of services that are here because it came out of needs in people's lives. <clears throat> the only idea I ever had was let's start a Bible study in that apartment at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. And then somebody said, well, we need food. And we said, yes. And then it was like, well, we're going to get some clothes. Yes. Well, what about a dental clinic? What are you going to do about the dental clinic, de dental needs? And I said, whatever you want to do. And so that particular person helped us start the dental clinic. And the same with the medical clinic. There was a need. And then there were people who were prompted by God to say, let's begin a medical clinic. And what about counseling? The mental health issues are everywhere. 
And so, again, as folks begin to be prompted by God, they've joined with us. And so we became a host of folks, furniture. Folks don't have furniture. We encourage people, don't rent any furniture, don't buy furniture. Pay your utility bills, pay your, your rent. Let us do those. And so people begin to give furniture, and then we go pick it up, and then we take it right to the home of the people. And so, so furniture, and uh, then the holiday times, of course, there's a Christmas store, which we're in right now. And then uh, the Thanksgiving, where we've had 6,000 folks. Again, it's not a soup line, because there's not much dignity in that. We take the food directly to their homes, and we fed those folks with 6,000 volunteers. And then the fall festival, whatever that is, Easter, but it, it's, every day is Christmas at Mission Arlington, and we look forward to giving. And people give, God gave, and we give. Through the pandemic, there have been tremendous uptick in needs uh, here of so many families. And Mission Arlington has been meeting these needs for over 30 years, but they have really stepped up to, uh, for the increase in needing that because the needs have ranged all the way from food to clothing to a place to live to inspiration and hope uh, there in the, in the counseling uh, that is given, plus the medical and dental needs. But the real uh, inspiration of this is not only are we meeting the needs of the people, but our citizens are coming together to work and to help others. It gives them awareness of the needs, but it also is forging incredible friendships uh, there through working and helping others. And then in addition to that, we see expressions of God's love here every day. And we all know that love and kindness always conquers hate. And we see that every day here in Mission Arlington. And in the mix of the pandemic and through the murder of George Floyd to the fact that uh, we have so many other challenges now, we have got to come together. And I'm very grateful here to Mission Arlington to leading the way because almost every citizen at some time or another has either been helped here or has worked here. Uh, to make a difference here in our community, and it's made us a much stronger city. The federal government should work in a supportive role uh, rather than being the spearhead. And uh, private sector, particularly the faith-based organizations, uh, the local governments formulate the plan, and uh, the federal government supports them uh, financially, and in every other way that we can. When we see something like what's going on here, we recognize that it really lightens our load. You know, the faith-based uh, community used to do everything that HUD does now, uh, except they did it better because there were relationships that were developed. It's the relationships that really put people in that trajectory to self-sufficiency. You can throw money at them until the cows come home. Uh, but when that relationship is developed and you spearhead the effort, then it is possible for the government, you know, to support that. As I'm listening to you, Secretary, I, uh, of course, it's such an honor to be here with you. But the thing I brag about, about the mission, is there's no bureaucracy here. And so we like that. it like it is. Yeah. And so if we could have the support of the people in this nation to pray, is you lead people to do that and to have the same vision we have. Right. Because everything I've read about you, I think we had the same God that communicated no to us. No question about it. And so it's just, it's just such a thrill to me to realize a partnership yeah. in, in that, that uh, prayer and then just people having the freedom mm -hmm. to, to, to give and to, to tell the people the story. Right. And so in this country, we still have freedom. We still have our constitution. Absolutely. And we, we're going to continue that way. And I tell people all the time that our country is full of extremely good people, people with big hearts. I meet them all the time. People like yourself, people like the mayor, people who volunteer to help others. And also, when it comes to financial resources, there's a lot more financial resources in the private sector than there is in the government, but the government tends to be able to focus it more. And uh, so that becomes obviously very, very helpful. And if they all work together, federal, state, 
local government, along with faith-based organizations, uh, the private sector, uh, the nonprofits. Those are the things that really make a difference. And you look at all the people out there who are in need. You know, I remember as a youngster growing up in, in poverty, I remember how grateful I was at Christmas time and other times when people actually looked out for me and, and gave me. I remember some of the very gifts <laughs> that I used to get. And, uh, you know, it is, it's just wonderful for the people who are able to give also. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Uh, it does something for your heart. You become a different person. That you're thinking, who is this person that is my neighbor and how can I help them? Right. Right. I mean, all of it is to honor the Lord. Um, amen. And so that's his purpose. And, and he gave his sons so that we could have that relationship with him. But he makes it real clear yeah. that he's, he comes first. Well, you know, when I was a, when I was a child, uh, I wanted to be a missionary doctor because I heard all the stories about the missionaries yeah. who would go to Africa and India yeah. and places. Well, right now we need the missionaries here. <laughs> well, you are one. <laughs> <laughs> and you're one of them too. And Mayor, you're one of them. And uh, all the people out there, you know, we have people right next door to us frequently, right around the corner from us, and we can be such a bright light in their lives. Exactly right. Thank you. Okay. Secretary so Carson, we are very appreciative of all the partnerships and collaboration that have taken place uh, here in our community, all the way from the Envision Center to the Opportunity Zones and so forth. But we are so excited about today because of the opportunity for the vision here mm -hmm. and, uh, of Mission Arlington and Tilly Bergen can be spread throughout the nation uh, here and with your voice and so forth because we all are Americans and we all are very hopeful about tomorrow and, and we do believe that, uh, that, that truly this model of Mission Arlington can work throughout and we're very grateful of your vision of the Mustard Seed Initiative uh, there because we've okay. seen it work here in Arlington and we know it can work anywhere. And it's interesting because Ms. Tilly tells us all the time uh, there as we move forward that we need to be sure and keep it simple mm -hmm. so that it can be duplicated anywhere in any size city or any place in America. And so we are so excited about what this could mean throughout America where we see that love and kindness can be extended to conquer hatred. Amen. And thank you for being an example of a local public official who gets behind an effort like this, has even volunteered in the center yourself and led the way uh, so that we can all see you know, regardless of political party, political party doesn't mean anything. What means something is the heart that you have for your fellow man. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.